I wrote this blog post a few weeks ago about the impending crisis that is Windows XP and IE8 and the point I was making was that XP will come off support in a little over a year and people have got to sort of figure out what they're going to do. Uh, and anyway, a bunch of people got a little bit upset and said, you know, why does Microsoft force us to upgrade and it means we have to upgrade our hardware and buy new equipment. And I thought it a little bit odd because every time I've used 8, it just seems to be fast, <laughs> much faster. Uh, so look, what I decided to do was I've, I found a piece of really old equipment and I did a back-to-back -back with Windows XP and uh, with uh, Windows 8. And I measured a whole bunch of different things, recorded it, and here it is. So when you have a look at this video, there's a, there's a few things to point out. So... First of all, it is really old hardware. It's a, it's an old Lenovo laptop. It's got a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, it is a Core 2 Duo, uh, which was you know okay at the time, but it was never sort of a, a high performance machine even back then. The stats in front of you at the moment are all out of the Passmark performance test software. So you can have a, a bit of a spin through that if you really want detail. And we'll have a look at some uh, sort of performance metrics out of Passmark a little bit later. So anyway, moving on past that, the other thing, just very, very briefly, is the Windows Experience Index. And obviously this came out of Windows 8. And yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so the 3.2, is it's not real good. The processor and the memory are probably the main things in terms of performance. And you know, they're, they're probably a little over half what a good machine now is. Uh, the graphics totally suck and the disk is, eh, you know, not too bad. Still a mechanical disk though, certainly not an SSD. So the first test I thought we might try on it is just doing an installation. Now, some of the tests I do later on, I use Camtasia and it runs on the machine and, you know, you get a nice picture. Obviously, you can't really do that when you're doing an install. The, you know, the thing is obviously installing an OS, it keeps rebooting. So I just set up a little webcam and I pointed it at the machine and I let it run. Uh, it does take a while, so everything you're looking at now is running at uh, four times normal speed. And then I crop a bunch of stuff out in the middle. Now in case it's not already immediately obvious, it is Windows 8 on the left side and it is Windows XP on the right hand side. So for both installations, it's just take defaults, 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 defaults everywhere, uh, install it onto an existing disk, overwrite everything, there's no upgrades, it's just really a, as clean a install as it can possibly be. There's the bits chopped out. Now Windows XP, you do need to enter a serial number for this distribution halfway through. But then on the other hand, when it's Windows 8, you've also got to enter some other information into Windows 8, such as actually creating a password, which is an eminently sensible idea. Now the other thing about this as well is that both of these are 32-bit machines. Uh, we couldn't get a 64-bit image running on this um, processor, it just wouldn't do it. And we're nearly there, nearly there on 8. And we're there, okay. So IE8 was, or sorry, I keep saying IE8, Windows 8 actually went really fast, comparatively. I mean, all right, nearly 25 minutes. Um, so we're back at one-to-one -one video speed now. So we've got a little bit of breathing space. Um, and, uh, you know, I was a bit surprised, actually, that Windows 8 did install faster because it's like a 2.5 gigabyte distribution. Uh, that's the size of the ISO compared to only about 550 meg for Windows XP. So I stopped both of these basically once you're actually in the OS and you've got a desktop or a metro blocky screen, as it may be, just to try and keep it as fair as possible. Almost there. Come on, XP. Yeah, 
And yeah, we made it. So, I mean, it's not a massive difference. It's like, you know, what, nearly one and a half minutes, which is really only about 5%. But, you know, again, this is, this is Windows 8. This is the, you know, 11 year newer operating system and it's newer, it's meant to be slower, but it's, uh, the installation's actually good. The installation's actually faster. Okay, so with that done, the, the next test I thought I'd give a bit of a run is boot. Uh, and, oh, yep, there we go, that's done already. So Windows 8 just totally smashed it on the boot. It's a really, really fast boot. I've got six seconds off that. XP is still going, almost there. There we go, 17 seconds. So that's a really, really major difference. I mean, XP comparatively was really, really slow uh, to boot up. But that is one of the things we notice about 8. It just seems to be super fast every time I start it, uh, which is good for 8, uh, not so good for XP. So the next one I thought I'd give a bit of a run is opening up a Word doc. And I had a great big 12 megabyte Word doc, which is my free ebook. And I thought, look, you know, this is certainly opening Word is a fairly typical task. Maybe 12 megabytes is not too typical, but we want to stretch them a little bit here. So I opened up the Word doc in each one. And in this case, again, it was Windows 8 that went faster. Um, and in fact, it took, uh, you know, 26% longer to load it up on XP. So Windows 8 did a really good job of that again. But, you know, like we're talking about a very small amount of time in the difference. So it's not anything massive. But still, to be honest, I think just if Win8 had been equal, it would be a good result for an operating system that's so much newer and larger. But, you know, it actually turned out to be faster. OK, so next test, I had a great big PDF document, uh, about 8 megabytes, which is just the PDF version of the Word doc we just saw. And this time, XP actually came out on top. Uh, but, you know, it's come out on top by 0.6 seconds, if you notice that, and it stops you from doing things you want to do. You're probably a bit more diligent than me. So, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty even, uh, but that is one for XP. Now, the next one I thought I'd have a go at, and this, I guess, does test the browser a little bit as well, and it's it's almost a little bit unfair because XP is stuck on IE8. It can't go past IE8. Obviously, you can go and get Chrome or Firefox or anything like that, but in terms of the, the native Microsoft offering, you're stuck on 8, whereas uh, Windows 8 manages to run uh, IE10, which is certainly a faster browser in every way. Now, I did clear out the cache first, just so it's a really, really even test. So evidence there, I am deleting absolutely everything out of history and caches and passwords and whatever else I might be able to do so that we get a nice, fair comparo. Uh, now let's give it a run. And there we go. So IE 10 on Windows 8 was really fast uh, in that go, you know, compared to IE 8 on Windows XP, it is a really big difference. And I mean that you notice that that's five seconds. I mean, as a web developer, if you can shave fractions of a second off load time, you're, you're very happy. <laughs> um, five seconds is daylight. So pretty good result there uh, for Win 8. So I thought in this next test, I'd really try and push it a little bit. So how can we kind of max things out? And, you know, this isn't sort of a typical end user test, but a 40 megabyte PSD file should push both operating systems, uh, you know, pretty reasonably. Um, so let's give it a run. And it's probably going to be a predictable result by about now because Windows 8 is killing it everywhere and there we go so Windows 8 loaded that up really really quickly considering it's 40 meg and we're opening it up on a seven year old operating system um, the 16 and a half seconds seems pretty reasonable for that example uh, XP still churning along And we got there at last. Uh, so that, again, that one really is a massive difference. I don't think um, many people working with Photoshop are going to go out and use machines like this. But again, in terms of actually pushing things uh, a little bit further, it's not a bad example. So what's that? About 25 seconds of difference. So that's a pretty serious difference. 
So the last test I wanted to do was using uh, the Passmark software, and I mentioned that earlier on, and Passmark make a product called Performance Test that runs through and looks at a whole bunch of different metrics uh, about the machine. And it, it doesn't just sort of look at metrics, it actually performs tests, and then it will look at things like, you know, what's the floating point performance of the CPU like. So it's, it's a pretty good sort of real-world test of equipment. So obviously what I did is I ran that up on XP, um, you know, went through and tested everything I possibly could with that, uh, and then did the same thing with Windows 8. On both, it couldn't actually test 3D graphics. That failed catastrophically on both. Um, but everything else I was able to test, and 3D graphics you know, is probably about the least important thing out of the metrics um, that we're looking at here. And what I think is interesting with these metrics is, is it kind of goes both ways uh, you know we probably won't worry too much about that top pass mark rating that's sort of an aggregate although it does obviously put Windows 8 some distance in front CPU is is pretty ballpark you know not much there 2d graphics you know they, they do matter quite a bit in terms of rendering and obviously there's a really fundamental difference there I mean Windows 8 is nearly double the speed memory 8's just a fraction slower uh, the, the disk was a bit slower on 8, I'm not quite sure why that is, maybe there's something with the drivers going on. But uh, overall, again, Windows 8 is in front with the Passmark rating. So that's really about it. Pretty much every conceivable way that we can test Windows 8 against uh, Windows XP, it was faster. It just did everything much better. Certainly using it and preparing demos, it was just much snappier. And it's on some pretty ordinary hardware too. You know, no one buys <laughs> this hardware. It's just a question of if you have this stuff floating around. But honestly, from what I can see, I can't see why, if you've got equipment of that sort of age, anyone would be thinking that in order to upgrade their operating system, they have to upgrade their hardware. So, you know, for the people who are very unhappy about my post on that basis, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's such a problem.